Hello and welcome to the Leech Aruba. How are you doing out there? I'm all pumped up after the Lagos Women Run. I improved on my time from last year, so excited. I'm giving a special shout out to my friend Benjamin Oko, who celebrated 10 years of his book and review show on Classic FM a short while back. I was there at the MC and Benji, I wish you many more exciting years promoting the love of reading. My guest today is a phenomenal woman. When I read her articles on LinkedIn, I knew I had to invite her to the literary bar. She's beautiful, smart, savvy, and tough. All of these qualities set her apart in her field of work. I feel so excited for her presence here that I will keep her for two conversations. If she objects, I will overrule her. So grab your drink and let's get lift after the break. So I've been called a feminist and I own it with my full chest. Being called a feminist is accusatory and dismissive, but I do not mind because a feminist is a woman who recognizes her fundamental human right and also that of her fellow man. Recognize that point, man. It's in the light of this that I acknowledge International Men's Day on November 19th. Men have their roles and women have theirs. Sometimes people hurt people in relationship. Alas, the cry of the abused woman is loud and just sympathy and support. Men have been conditioned from infancy to refrain from expressing their pain. Boys don't cry, we tell them, be a man. So men drown in the ocean of unshed tears and swallow the bitter pill of ill treatment at the hands of their partners. Men are also victims of domestic violence. One in three men will suffer some form of abuse from their partner, often in silence because society will label him a weakling for screaming out. My guest today is Wanne Okafo, a seasoned victimologist, legal expert who is also a dedicated advocate for victims' rights. She has a background in law, victimology, and forensic psychology. Wanne obtained her law degree from the University of East London, she specialized in criminal justice and victimology from Tilburg University in the Netherlands. She's currently pursuing a PhD in forensic psychology. She's a founder of DMAMBA Victim Support Hub, a nonprofit organization committed to providing comprehensive support to victims of violence, abuse, and discrimination. One of consults for reputable organizations, adv advising them on how to create safe spaces for all staff. Welcome, Wanne. Thank you. How thank you. are you? I'm good, thank you. All that <laughs> introductory accolades. <laughs> is <laughs> intimidating. Even me, I'm scared for myself now. <laughs> so you can imagine how all of us feel. So it's nice to have you here. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Wanne, you look like a feminist. So now, yes, feminist in what sense? You look tough. You look strong. And it's scary to most men. A lot of men are afraid of confident women. Yeah. So, but today's fight, you're fighting on their behalf. Yes, I am. Because you say that some men are also um, victims of abuse. Every day, mm -hmm. GBV, GBV, gender-based violence is all for the women. Yes. Women feel like the victims all the time. Yes. So why the special interest in men? Okay, you know, first of all, if you look at, um, if you Google domestic violence and abuse, and you put, you click on image, mm -hmm. you just see different images of women, 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 women. And yes, in as much as we have many cases of uh, female gender-based violence against women, mm -hmm. men are also recipients of domestic violence and abuse. And because of the stereotypical way we look at men, men don't cry, like you said mm -hmm. earlier, Men are supposed to toughen it up. A man is ridiculed if he says he's a, he's a victim of abuse at home. But really, that is the truth. And for that reason, I decided that instead of overflogging the discourse on domestic violence when the woman is the recipient, mm -hmm. why, don't you, why don't you just do something else that will actually sh shake the table a bit and bring but, to light this situation? Okay, first of all, what, what is a victim and what is victimology? I didn't even know such a field existed. Uh, victimology, uh, again, just 
simply put, is a study of victimization. Um, just like you have criminologists, you have victimologists. Mm -hmm. The victimologist is one who who has studied victimization and try and looks at various ways to help victims and also work with the government or the society to you know, shape victim focused uh, policies, make the place safer for victims, give them a chance to be heard, give them a, give them a place to heal from whatever victimization they might have um, experienced. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so a, a victim, I mean, once you say victim, you just have that image of somebody who's suffering or somebody who's yes. suffered some, some sort of abuse or a loss of abuse. Yeah. Some, yeah, it could be, some yeah. sort. So how, how do you recognize a victim? And how does a victim recognize that you have been victimized? Okay, so um, like you said, there are different kinds of victims. Victims of a crime or victim of an event such as a collapsed building. It's not mm -hmm. a crime, but an event has occurred. It could be fire. It mm -hmm. could be terrorism. A victim of kidnap, a victim of flood. So flood, rather. Mm -hmm. so, so we have issues. There are different kinds of victims. Some people do not even know that they are victims. Mm -hmm. They just, again, I think it's also the Nigerian factor. Something happened. You survived it. And you say, hmm, just thank God. But you go home and you have a trauma because you saw, probably imagine you seeing a, a, a building collapse right mm -hmm. in front of you. You, you probably have some kind of traumatic experience from that. You did not get injured, but you could get injured here. And again, we're not so, so properly. Victim, my, uh, victims have mostly mental health issues and then physical yes, it could issues. Be both, they are yes. physical scars and then they are mental, mental scars. Health. So because uh, November 19th is a International Men's Day, mm -hmm. And like I said, this program is dedicated to all the men that we yeah. love. We want to let them know that Abego, we love her now. We love her now. You know, uh, in South Africa, they have this thing that they say uh, men has come. And um, I don't buy into that because I do not think that men, just because they are the other gender. I know now they're like a million, but as Nigerians, we have to. Mm -hmm. They are the other gender. But how does a man become a victim of domestic abuse to a woman? And okay. does it really happen? Men are stronger than us. That is the perception that men are stronger than women. Have, have you ever seen, I, mean, I, I saw this, um, they just digressed a bit, I saw this uh, video, of, um, they put um, the simulation for a man to feel what it feels like to give birth or even have period pain. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even take it. Mm -hmm. and. And, you think, and we're the weakest. Yes. We're the weakest sex. No, I don't think. I think mm. women are women are much stronger than men. Mm. A woman who would go through childbirth and then after going through CS and all that, and then the next year she says, "I want another baby." I, want another I don't one. think any man. If, they, if a man gets caught even shaving his beard, <laughs> he goes through some kind of trauma. So I, I actually beg to differ uh -huh. when it comes to who is stronger. Mm -hmm. I think it's relative. Okay. So men as victims of domestic. Violent How does it start? Hmm. It depends. So, you know, you go to a place, you go to a, maybe you go to a restaurant, for mm -hmm. example, a woman barges in there because her husband or her boyfriend is an under woman, and she gets there and she slaps the man. People start clapping, or people whip out their phones. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't see anything wrong with it. Yeah. So the same way a woman starts to do things at home, and people do not see anything. She's just being a woman. Mm -hmm. it, start, it could start from there. It could start from anything. Again, in, the, in today's world where we have a lot of economic decline, mm -hmm. maybe in a place where the man was the sole breadwinner, Bread yeah. and now the woman has taken over because she has a better job and the man isn't, suddenly so the woman has taken the role of the breadwinner, the provider at mm -hmm. home. It's, I'm not saying it happens in, in all cases, but in some cases, as the woman takes the role of the breadwinner or the provider or the sole provider in mm -hmm. the home, she starts doing little, little things that we don't know that she's abusing the husband, for example. No activity in the other room mm -hmm. if you don't bring money. Mm -hmm. The man now is without relief mm -hmm. i can't get it he can't get what he wants from his wife because mm -hmm. he's not bringing in any money okay. that's an abuse when you refuse conjugal rights mm -hmm. because of money mm -hmm. i think it's wrong it starts from there little little things like that when you say things like 
your friends are doing better than yourself. Good for nothing. Mm -hmm. it, it, when they call me, you two, you stand up. Yeah, when they say, exactly. <laughs> and so when they call me, you two will stand up. The other day, uh, so and so person bought his wife a car. Mm -hmm. I'm still here struggling. I'm going to leave you. Threaten, threaten that you're going to leave. I'm going to get, I'm going to walk out of this relationship. It, it, you know, it begins, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be physical, mm -hmm. but women have the gift of the gab and they can use their tongues to kill. Mm -hmm. So a man may not necessarily be, they don't even really know they are going victims and they just think this woman is giving me stress. And after some time, when it becomes a lot, it becomes too much, it becomes unbearable. But they can't tell anybody. That's the point. Why can't they tell someone? Because society has said, man up, fix up, you're a man. Men don't cry. Men are supposed to bear it. You're supposed to make the money. It's, you, have, you have to do this. You have to be the hunter. You must do this. Men cannot be in the different, like in prevailing economic situations now where they, there's a shift in the family. The man who was previously the provider, so provider now, loses his job or business isn't going well. His wife, who probably has a stable job, is earning more money now. Now the roles have changed. She's now this provider, the sole provider. She's the breadwinner of the home. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen all the time, but in some cases, when that kind of thing happens, you see a gradual abuse uh, you know, starts in the sense that the woman starts to say things like, Is it the same as nagging? No, nagging isn't an abuse. No. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> men, men say yeah. that, they say you're nagging me, and they just carry their bag and so leave the house. See, they, they, might, they might define this these things as nagging. When a woman says things like, when they say, all men stand up, you two will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it may come across as nagging, but it's actually, it's actually more of a verbal abuse. Okay. So maybe there's, maybe there's a, there's a, there's a mix-up in the definition of nagging. Okay. So you could say nagging can be a form of abuse if you define okay, it Okay, nagging is a repeated request for something, for something mm -hmm. or repeated... Uh, just you keep happening on one particular issue over, over and, and over, over and over, over again. again. So following what you're saying, so if the content of the nagging now comes down to emasculating the man. Oh, yes. So uh, maybe the man in the morning, maybe used to eat egg when he was an MD. Now he's in the house, no job. I said, where's my food? Say, eh, if you don't work, where's the food? Exactly. Okay. So it, it, it's slow. Is it when, when, when victims of abuse in any shape or form mm -hmm. may not recognize that they are being abused in the beginning okay because it might start off as one little thing mm -hmm. just say something and you pass another time now people say things like no romance without finance mm -hmm. yes it's a, sl it's a slogan but actually speak when you come when you see it in play mm -hmm. so the man doesn't have any money the wife shuts down the the, the, the as i said the other the other room and it becomes the norm. So the, if, when the guy wants the other room activity, he goes to go and look for money, he goes to do this, only because of that. And then he finds himself being a slave to that. It's an abuse. You've, you've conditioned the man in a way that if you don't bring money, you're not getting this thing. But I, I, if a man loses his job and the wife takes over that role, remember the man's power was mostly financial. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the marriage, when the man is saying, I'm the head of the house, I'm the head, you know. And then the woman starts to provide all these things. Is she also expected as she goes to work, gets the money, she'll come back and she'll do all those things no, she no, used no, to no, do, no, and no, the man is at home? No, 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 no. Um, see, I don't want to go into family dynamics like mm -hmm. that. But when the man was providing, mm -hmm. he wasn't making mouth that if not for me, people will suffer. He's doing, he's playing, uh, this is in a sane environment. When mm -hmm. the man knows his role as the head of the family, he brings everything in, he doesn't complain, he doesn't make any noise, or he doesn't make a song and dance about what he's doing at home. So if he was being the man, he was being the man, he did not make noise about, oh, I filled your tank with petrol, mm -hmm. I've won, I've given you, no, he's not doing that. So when, when the roles are reversed, the woman shouldn't make a song and dance about what she's doing also. Just do it. Mm -hmm. And of course, encourage the man to get back on his feet. That's what you should do, really, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in an ideal family situation. But when you now start telling people, telling your driver, mm -hmm. don't fill the tank, we're traveling, don't mm -hmm. fill that tank. Mm -hmm. Because if you fill the tank, by the time we come back, he has finished the petrol. 
and you deprive the man of going out. So when you just the people, people will leave their tank on almost mm -hmm. empty. So when he, when the man of the house takes the car, he should go and buy petrol. Or the food in there, you tell the cook in the house. Mm -hmm. No fresh food. Any, if anybody wants to eat, whatever is there is what they give them. Don't make any fresh food. Mm -hmm. Things because, like that. Because they didn't bring the money. The man. the man cannot, he's trying his best, but you know, that's his one side. Mm -hmm. In a case where the man has money, but he's also a victim of abuse because yeah. the wife is just an abuser. You don't know that you, are, you talk, to say things like, I'm just going to leave you. You threaten to leave the person, or you slowly isolate the man from his friends. I mean, I've heard cases where this man, when maybe when he met his girlfriend, all his friends disappeared because, mm -hmm. or even his family members, you isolate them from it. Sometimes people don't know that they are being abused, you know. Okay, speaking on that, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll look into an actual case that happened in the UK where a woman abused her boyfriend to the part where. Um, it ended up with her getting sentenced. So please join us after the break and then we'll do something a bit different. Talk about what you boo people's side of this and not just the Nigerian man. See you after the break. Thank you. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're still in the literary bar and we have Wanil Kafa with us, a foremost victimologist in Nigeria. We're talking about women abusing their husbands. Um, when a man is emasculated by the woman he went to marry, as we say in Africa, as we say in Nigeria, a woman he paid her bride price for, and all of a sudden, this man no longer feels like a man. But beyond marital situations, in ordinary relationships, boyfriend and girlfriend, abuse also happens. The case in the United Kingdom where a man got, Garrett Jones was abused by his girlfriend, Sophie Rig Sarah Rigby. They met online and um, for five months they were caught. According to the man, he was love bombed by this woman and they moved in together. And she says, you have to keep paying the rent. When he moved in, she gave him terms and conditions of living in the house. As a matter of fact, the headline, anytime you look at this, you come across the story that, the man was refused access to the toilet by the woman in a house where he was paying rent. And this happened insidiously. Oh, I love you so much. I love you so much. Oh, you can't love your family as much as me. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to go and visit your mom. What about me? Oh, it's this. She would take him to a shop. He would pay. She would choose the most expensive gift, and then he'll pay for it. They go to a restaurant, they will pay. I think the only good thing that happened in this case of the man, if that's what he wanted, was she put him on such a strict diet that he lost 28 kg in, I think, two or three months. She, she had isolated him from uh, his whole family until he saw his mom in the shop and the mother started crying, like, what has become of you? They met online. This was in 2021. He was so afraid for himself, so afraid of this woman. I reiterate, he was paying rent. When she's going up, he goes out of the house. He would use toilets in the shops nearby. She wouldn't allow him in the house where he was paying rent. At this time, no member of his family or his friends was talking to him because she would withhold everything from him, sex, companionship, everything, and reduce this man to nothing. And he was a social worker. But eventually, he got, um, through his mother's encouragement, he called... Uh, a society that was helping men, uh, mankind. And that was how he started to go through therapy and got himself back. And people said, why did you speak? He said, I wanted other men to know what I was going through. So they, if it's happening to me, it can happen to other people. So when we think of domestic abuse victims, our mind is going to husbands and wives. So it can happen even to young people. Yes. Where the girl says to you, no, you have to choose between me and, your and this person. Yes. If you know, so I imagine that's how the young girls talk and all that. So how, like I said, how do people know that this is no longer love, but yeah, madness? Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, you have a domestic abuse. You have the physical, emotional, psycho sorry, psychological, emotional abuse when you are verbal when you do all that isolation is manipulation also mm -hmm. is an abuse, yeah. you know? So this case of Gary and yes. 
Gareth. Yeah, Gareth. It's, in fact, that's, he's, a, he's a lucky man. He got out of it alive. alive. There was a story in America. Again, another couple who mm -hmm. met online. Uh, a Nigerian, a young man born of Nigerian parents. Yeah. He lost his own life. Wow. She actually stabbed him and she claimed that. She actually called the police after the incident which she was fighting for her life. But it was later they now found out that she, the guy had been subjected to different kinds of abuse. The CCTV showed her slapping him in the elevator, things like that. His, his text messages to her, you are going to kill me, but I love you, this, that, that, and the mm -hmm. other. So there are many cases. Speaking of the UK again, I remember if you, I saw the news one time where the, the UK police had to tell Nigerian women, stop reporting your husbands to the police. Mm -hmm. Every small thing you call the police, mm -hmm. every small thing. You want to get the father of your children arrested and deported. getting deported because the threats of dep deportation, they keep the man in check, is an abuse. Many men, many Nigerian men abroad are victims of such behavior. In Nigeria, we don't have deportation. But, but the law, I mean, you mentioned uh, when we were talking before, how does a man go to the police to say, my wife is beating me? They'll laugh at you. Say, oh, God, you're the man now. <laughs> you take oh, God, which kind of which talk with this one? Don't talk about outside. <laughs> so you see, we had mankind mm -hmm. who brought the man out yeah. of his, uh, Gareth, out mm -hmm. of his own situation. Yes. There's a need for male shelters. Yeah. You know, because what we have is you hang out with your friends. The beer parlor, bar situation. You go and sit down with your friends and drink your sorrows away. But this thing is still there. There's no, there's no place for you to run to and get help. They say sorrow can swim in alcohol, so exactly. you can't drown it. Can, <laughs> <laughs> but it, well, again, you get what I mean. You see, that issue is still there. Mm -hmm. you, you have to seek again. We, in Africa, we believe in the sanctity of marriage. There's no divorce. You must do this. You must do that. And it, at least when you have intervention, you can come in and save a life because even the woman can end up being the victim because yes. if you push the man so much and one day the man decides it's going to there's mm -hmm. no stopping i saw i saw a video of uh, a man in america who had called the police on himself because he mm -hmm. killed his wife yes and the way he was speaking it came across as to me i, I wanted to this there's a, there's a, there's a there is a condition called Batagwomen syndrome, mm -hmm. where the woman actually kills the man yes. because of years and years of um, abuse. Ju juxtapose that with the Stockholm syndrome, where you actually let to stay with your so yes, with your so abuser. that is what most men do could, could be experiencing the Stockholm yeah, syndrome. Yeah, you you have put me in captivity. So Briefly, what's the Stockholm syndrome? So that Stockholm syndrome is when you. You actually rely on your own vict your own victimizer mm -hmm. for everything. You, you tend to look at your victimizer as your savior. So imagine, let's digress a bit. Mm -hmm. you, it, they kidnapped the chickboard girls, and you hear mm -hmm. that some people went back. Yeah, they become in love with their yeah uh, their kidnappers, yeah. and that's the only life they want to live. They don't want to live any other life. They want to stay with that person, even though that person has been the one abusing you. But you still see the person as your, your line of hope, your everything, mm -hmm. this person. So it's a syndrome. That, mm -hmm. So when I say there are no battered men, probably men suffering from Stockholm syndrome, perhaps there's a need to reset mm -hmm. that more to see whether that could be their condition. Uh, so what's the role of the church and the society or religion and the society? Because I wonder you go to your pastor and say, my wife is beating me, I'm out of this marriage. What would the good man of the Lord say? Okay. So, my wife is beating me is an extreme because mm -hmm. one would say my life is at stake and I have to run. Mm -hmm. Or my wife is abusing me. Abusing me. me. So, <laughs> I, you know... Oh, I, let me use another word. My wife is molesting me. Molesting me. me. <laughs> <laughs> see, you mm -hmm. see, if you're not... If, if this thing is new to you, mm -hmm. you say things like, how can your wife molest you? Yeah. Well, yourself, get money for her. Mm -hmm. Yourself, when she starts, go go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Go and see your friends. Don't sit down in the house. They, most people don't cannot marry this idea of a man being abused by his wife or his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. In fact, what am I saying? I know of a story of a young man who was abused by his girlfriend and went on to marry this girlfriend. It was at the end of it all that 
Then the matter became serious. Like, but what did you?